This is Vandenberg Air Force Base, home of a very special genus of birds. Huge, wingless, with man-made metal bodies. These birds live in steel and concrete nests that lie scattered over Vandenberg's sprawling acres. Headquartered here in the western test range of the U.S. Air Force, probably the world's biggest and busiest shooting gallery. It launches nearly three times as many space and ballistic type vehicles as does the East Coast facility at Cape Kennedy. Today's missiles, birds as they are often called, are incredibly large and complex. So complex in fact that no human eye can possibly observe every detail of the launch and flight or guarantee to spot the malfunction, however minute, that may cause failure. For this reason, as science has increased the sophistication of our missiles and rockets, it has had to develop mechanical means of checking on their performance. One of these is telemetry. Sensing devices in the missile send back data to a ground station where it is recorded and analyzed. But telemetry can only supply part of the necessary evidence. The sharp eye of the camera is needed to complete the record. The men of the 1369th Photographic Squadron, Aerospace Audio Visual Service, are responsible for this exacting job at Vandenberg. Their photo documentation of a major launch begins early, during the missile assembly and checkout phase. It would be difficult to find an outfit with a deeper sense of responsibility. These men know that the footage they shoot today will record the success or provide vital clues to the failure of a multi-million dollar missile. This assignment, document the preparation of the Tyros operational satellite, known as TOSS-A, a space satellite designed to observe worldwide weather patterns from an equatorial orbit of 750 nautical miles and transmit photographs that will enable the meteorological experts to more accurately predict weather conditions. Thus, the significant pre-launch events are recorded on film in both motion picture and still photography. Cameramen of the still photo section average more than 21,000 exposures per month on color and black and white film. Prints ranging from 4 by 5 to 20 by 24 inch sizes are processed in the laboratory, contributing valuable photographic support for missile operations. Engineering sequential photography, a method by which timing pips are printed on the edge of the film to give a time versus picture sequence is often the prime source of performance data on operations of this kind. On a major launch, as many as a dozen or more manned and remotely controlled camera stations may be set up to record every aspect of the launch and flight. In some cases, 45 or more cameras may be trained on the vehicle as it lifts off and heads for outer space. 
or for a designated target area in the Pacific, thousands of miles down the range. For Toss A, scheduled for launch during the pre-dawn hours of an October day, 36 cameras are called for. The instruments at remote controlled station C, uprange of the vehicle, are housed in this aluminum structure for protection from the elements. Overall surveillance is provided by a 16 millimeter Mitchell camera running at normal speed or 24 frames per second. The same view is covered by a high speed 16 millimeter Millikan which operates at 400 frames per second and provides an identical picture in slow motion. Extreme high speed photography is obtained from photosonic cameras mounted on opposite sides of the vehicle a mere 25 feet away. This is Station G on the uprange side. Station F is on the downrange side and mounts an identical 16 millimeter photosonic. Both cameras cover the critical engine ignition phase of the launch. Because they are so close to the fire and blast of the engines, these cameras are protected by specially designed steel housings. Both run at frame rates of 1,000 frames per second. The remaining fixed cameras are focused on strategic parts of the big bird's anatomy, such as the umbilical disconnect, the fuel lines and barcus joints, the vernier engines, the launcher arms. Each is configured for a specific film speed and size, from the standard 16 millimeter instruments to the big 70 millimeter hulchers that provide slow speed sequential coverage, the equivalent to a series of still pictures in a two and one half by five inch format. Responsibility for tracking the flight of the Delta vehicle is assigned to mobile tracking cameras. The venerable but versatile M45, a modified World War II gun mount, is the workhorse of the Vandenberg trackers. Each mobile tracker is capable of mounting a variety of cameras. For this operation, the tracker at site five We'll use one 16 millimeter Mitchell at 24 frames per second and two 35 millimeter Mitchells at 48 frames per second. A single operator can position the M45 in both elevation and azimuth. By equipping his cameras with different sized lenses, the M45 operator can frame the image for a broad overall view or to feature specific parts, such as the upper first stage. Six other trackers will be looking at Toss A as it lifts off, including one on Tranquillion Peak, the highest point in the Vandenberg complex. But the squadron has a capability far beyond the requirements for this particular launch. Scheduled for more and more use as long-range trackers are several newly acquired ultra-modern cine sextant optical tracking mounts. Each mount can handle four large cameras of 35 and 70 millimeter format with reflector or refractor optics and focal lengths up to 200 inches. An outstanding feature of the Cine Sextant is its radar focusing equipment for maintaining focus from liftoff on long focal length short depth of field lenses. Combined with an extremely fast and flexible stick controlled movement, this feature gives the new mount distinct advantage over earlier designs. An even newer addition to the tracker family is the intermediate focal length optical tracker, known as IFLOT. Over a period of time, the Make Do M45s will be replaced by these precision tracking mounts, specifically designed and built for the job. Among the features of the IFLOT are a completely new upper carriage a 45 degree line of view sighting telescope with 10 or 20 power with interchanging of the eyepiece, an open sight with no magnification for target acquisition, totally enclosed and permanently lubricated drives, and many others. Each IFLOT will hold four different cameras. Also available, but not required for the night launched Toss A, is the squadron's airborne tracking equipment. The cameras can be carried in two different types of aircraft, a UH-1F helicopter 
and a twin-engine C-131. Since the weather at Vandenberg is frequently overcast, these airborne camera platforms have the advantage of being able to hover above the ceiling and obtain additional tracking footage. Even though the setup for Toss A does not include the new trackers or the airborne cameras, it will still provide wide coverage of the launch. And to operate such a network efficiently, there must be a centralized control. Since the blockhouse is the hub of the entire operation, the camera control center is located there. In charge is the pad chief, an experienced instrumentation cameraman, an old hand at the hectic launch day routine, whose first job is to check out all power, timing, and communication circuits. The squadron has four separate radio frequencies for its exclusive use. With this system, they can cover two launches at the same time, or four launches within 24 hours. A two-way radio system is used for communication between the camera control console and the manned tracking mounts. Underground cables carry the pad chief's commands and the coded timing signals, or PIPs, to the remotely controlled stations. But the camera is a delicate instrument, subject to the ravages of salt air, corrosion, constant use. Because each camera must function perfectly on the job, regular maintenance is vital. There will be no retakes on Toss A. Expert repairmen in the squadron's maintenance shop make certain that the mechanical eyes watching Toss A will not blink at the wrong moment. Out on the pad, Toss A is entering the last phase of the long and complicated countdown, covered from nose to tail by the unflinching gaze of dozens of cameras. Other cameras survey the activity in the blockhouse. Still others record the sequence of events in the observation room, where personnel of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration direct the spacecraft portion of this flight. As the count continues into the night, some last-minute adjustments are made to the cameras on the umbilical mast. And now the huge bird is uncaged. In moments, the touch of a button in the blockhouse will turn it into 90 feet of surging power. The cameras are rolling. And this is what they see. Things happen fast at Vandenberg, in the shops as well as on the pads. Normally, the results of an operation such as Toss A are ready for viewing in 24 hours or less. Under pressure, the squadron's photo processing laboratory has produced finished film in four to five hours. Some 12 million feet of motion picture film is processed yearly, enough to reach from coast to coast across the United States. Prints are made for the program contractors as well as for the range. Because of the speed with which the film is processed, project engineers are often able to review the launch mere hours after it takes place. On this occasion, all systems functioned well. But if trouble had developed, as it has in the past and undoubtedly will in the future, the all-seeing cameras would have revealed vital clues. Tyros is in orbit performing its extraterrestrial duties remarkably well. But since zero hour for Tyros, the busy cameras have watched many other spacecraft take off from Vandenberg. Theirs is a never-ending task, 
and one that will continue to grow in scope. But the challenge will be accepted as a matter of course by the men of the 1369th Photo Squadron, the bird watchers of Vandenberg. It's all part of the job, part of knowing that every success the cameras record, every fault they expose, is an important contribution to the national space effort. <laughs>